EA Interviews, Episode 93. Inspiration, transformation, success stories, and the imperfect action round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's expert authority effect interview. Have you ever wanted more hours in the day? Have you ever thought, man, if I could just have some extra time? Is there more you want out of life that you want to accomplish, but you think that time is the problem? I felt that way, and that's why I'm excited to have Chad Cooper on today's episode. He has worked with Olympians, professional athletes. He's a syndicated radio host, best-selling author and speaker, and we have him here today to talk about time and how you can leverage it to grow your business, increase your profits, make more impact with people's lives, and have a lot more fun doing it. We're going to bring him up right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chad Cooper. Chad, how are you doing today? (laughs) Doing fantastic. Thanks, Mario. How about yourself? I'm feeling great. I'm actually very excited to have you here because, you know, I know about your program and your book and the stuff you're doing and it's phenomenal and I'm so glad we originally got connected but I want to hear what you're up to now with uh, your legendary lifestyle and how you're helping people because there's so many people out there with time issues. I mean we all have the same 24 hours but I want to know your insights from working with all these high-level people and how you can help them also. What made you want to get into all of this? Well, what what actually started, thanks for asking the question, what actually started this whole thing and, and what actually rolled into creating the book was really when I retired the first time from a small little computer company you've probably never heard of called Microsoft. You may, have, may not have heard of them before. But I retired when I was 35 and I made a decision to leave the corporate world. I made a decision to be really the, the active uh active influence in my son's life. And it was a joint decision for my wife and I to pioneer before men, you know, were doing that to say, this is what I want to do. Financially, we can do that. But very quickly at that point, I went, I've accomplished everything I wanted to. My goal was at 19 to say, what do I want my life to look like at 40? And I did it five years before that age came around. And I said, now what do I do? And so this was really about a selfish kind of goal of, I've got a lot of decades in front of me, God willing, how do I maximize this? How do I replicate that success in the first first half or first third of my life? Hopefully third, right? <laughs> Plan on living for a long time. And so what I realized in working with influential people, be that Bill Gates at Microsoft or Tony Robbins, a lot of, of mentors that I've been fortunate to, to work with is really, as as W. Edward Deming said, is a bad system will beat a good person every time. And so I realized very quickly in that time, Mario, that you get 168 hours a week, no more, no less. So it doesn't matter how much money you have, whether you're Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, we all get the same amount of time. It's how we use it that separates the boys from the men and the women from the girls. What do you think most people are doing wrong with their time that they could improve on right now? Well, let's look at some examples of who's doing it right. How can we have somebody like Elon Musk? And I'll throw out names. It it, it has no bearing on politics, has no bearing whether you like the person or not. Let's focus on what their behavior is in terms of time. How can somebody like Elon Musk run a space company, run an automotive company and upside down the automotive industry, be able to come from where he had his start. How can he do that and be a multi-billionaire and yet still have the same amount of time? How can Olympians, as an example, compress time and achieve a gold medal, uh, usually around age 19? Well, it's that they understand how to make time work for them. So if we look at today, what are the challenges that we have? Well, if you are an advocate, you like Stephen Covey as an example, and I love Stephen Covey's work, but let's be honest, his, his philosophy and his work is really dated in the 21st century today. When time management came out by Covey or Robbins and some of these others, 
they didn't have multiple phone systems. They didn't have social media. How many accounts do you have? Probably 12, right? How many emails do we have? We are constantly being bombarded by alarms, by notifications, by multiple communication channels that are literally being interrupters. And you can do the research and see out there, but it, what it's doing is it's preventing us from living in the present moment. And so the question becomes, how do we actually determine who do we want to be in the process of anything that we're doing? Not living in the past, not living in the future. And so that begins with being able to say, I'm going to manage my calendar. I'm going to manage my life rather than it dictating terms to me. That's powerful. That is extremely powerful because like you were saying, we all have the same 24 hours, but what are you doing with it? Let's talk about rituals. What do you adv- – let me ask you. Do you believe in them and what do you think people should be doing in the first thing they wake up in the morning or the first couple of things? You know, wh- wh- What can you talk about that? Because I ask a lot of people this and some people are like, eh, 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 and then other people are like, no, this is what I do and I block off – you know, an hour here, a half hour here, two hours here yeah. before they do anything. Where's your school of thought on that? Well, I think what this is really about, as I said just a minute ago, is who are you being in the midst of whatever you're doing? And so the first thing is to understand, are you a lark or are you a night owl? And most people know the term night owl, but very few people understand lark. And what that is really talking about in our health, in our our circadian rhythm, 24 hours a day, is melatonin. And so the question isn't so much what do you do or what should you be doing by society's expectation, is what is your body designed to do? So if we look at a night owl, they have melatonin that goes up and overnight it slowly and gradually decreases or dissolves. And they're the kind of person when they wake up, they still haven't dissipated all the melatonin in the body. So when you wake up and they're like, shh, just shut up. I need a cup of coffee. Don't say anything. That is not the formula of success by saying, oh, you should be a lark. Now, I'm a lark, okay? Now, what does a lark do? A lark, their melatonin goes up, and in the middle of the night, it crashes. So when they wake up, they're like me as the lark, and we're ready to go. I wake up, and I'm out of bed within 10 seconds, right? And I'm the person that irritates the crap out of the, the the night owl they're like shut up but i'm up at 4 30 in the morning i may be up at, at four in the morning that's when my day starts and so the question is this first are you honoring your circadian rhythm what actually works for you so if you need that time are you creating that space in the morning to be able to have that cup of coffee Maybe go do some meditation or devotion. For me, I can get up at four in the morning. You know why I love it? Because nobody's going to bother me for hours and I can get a crap load of things done without interruption. So the question is, is how are you actually structuring and setting up your day? And does your calendar reflect it in honor you doing that? Do you look at your calendar and is it filled immediately with a bunch of have tos or I get to experiences? What do you recommend it should be filled with? I recommend it should be filled with get to experiences. And if we really look at that, you know, we're we're talking about in the 21st century all of those interruptions. And so let's take a look at where that behavior has served us historically and where it is being used against us today. So we need to understand in that Mario that we are really fighting guerrilla warfare tactics. And if we look back at the American Revolution as an example, that's a big part of why our country won its freedom, as we, we have, you know, Fourth of July, that Independence Day that we just recently celebrated. So we can honor in that system great tactic, but it's used against us today through social media, through apps and notifications, just bombarding us and knocking us off of our strategy, off of our tactics. And if we were thinking about if I was a surgeon, we need to be precision. So how many of us are actually going into our day, into our schedules with that precision? How many of us are going in and understanding what the outcome is for an appointment? Or is your calendar filled with things like workout? I mean, unless you're really sick and demented like me, 
as a former, you know, I had 33 major sponsors doing the Ironmans. And part of the reason why I have a cane right now recovering <laughs> from an injury. But our calendars are filled with have to language. So if you actually look at the subject line, is it drop the kids off for practice or band recital? Or is it actually using language that inspires you, connects you with your purpose, fills you with emotions you want to experience or want to avoid? So, you know, when I would take my son to school, it says, I've spent quality one-on-one -on -one time transporting my son safely to school. So there's a couple premises. Quality one-on-one -on -one time means I'm not on my cell phone. He's not on a smart, smart device in the back seat and we're disconnected. I mean, if, if you got kids, how many of your audience feel guilty they don't have enough time with their kids? Yet they're missing the windows because they're not paying attention or they don't know how to maximize it because their calendar isn't directing them what to focus in on. Instead, there's an app that's throwing them off their game because of guerrilla tactics today. I love that you touched upon that and I was going to flat out ask it if you didn't, but you made it super easy for me because one of the most impactful things, you know, when we were talking about launching your book was your calendar. We were booking a meeting and I'll never forget it said drive safely to I think it was something with your son. Yeah. And ever since then, I've been putting, you know, if there's an appointment at three o'clock, five o'clock, or dinner appointment at seven, whatever, the half hour to 45 minutes before is always drive safely and be present for whatever the next event thing is. Exactly. And so when we actually have a system, the reality is, is we need a dynamic system of support. Otherwise, what you're trying to do is change your stress, your happiness, your fulfillment by a Band-Aid approach. Motivation and inspiration are delightful, but they're only a shallow level of a solution like the Band-Aid. So if you don't eliminate the root cause and it's showing up in your calendar each and every moment that you have a ding go off, oh, I'm supposed to go do this. Well, the question is, who do you want to be in whatever you're doing in that way? Does your subject line actually indicate the strength of a purpose, not discipline? Does it have empowering? Look, I'm a former regimental award-winning Marine. If I can use the word juicy and delicious, you can too. I'm evolved now. So does it have language that's inspiring, compelling you? And is it connecting you to your spirit? Today, we have a society that is wanting to be, you know, doing spiritual without being spiritual. And the easiest way we can do that is, as you said, getting up in the morning is how are you connecting? How are you connecting to whatever is in front of you in a way that fills you up versus drain your batteries? So literally, if I looked at my calendar, it's seven days across, which is 168 hours. Keep the math simple. Seven days that I can look at. And I invite you to take a look and see, does your calendar drain your batteries or recharge them? despite whether something on it may be difficult for you to address or go into. Is there a sense of mission and adventure? But mostly, are you free in your engagement towards it, or do you feel imprisoned by it? If those are not checking off as yeses, it's time for an overhaul. You're running on borrowed time. And how many decades do you have in front of you? That's a great outlook on it, and it sounds like that's the contributing factor to the burnout that a lot of people experience. Would you say it's just because they don't really burn out? They're just no longer inspired by it? I would say there's a couple things. You know, I, I said in there that I have seven days that I look at, and the way that I structure that is – by being able to look at the seven days, I set that up every week for success. What do I want the next 168 hours to look like? You know, you don't go and perform on a stage. You don't do a movie without prepping the, the movie set. You don't go on to an interview without prepping. Why are you going into your week without the preparation? You know, you're setting yourself self up for like a B-rated movie. Don't you want to perform as the lead actor for an Oscar or a Grammy or a Tony Award? I think Grammys are, are music. I cannot sing. So we'll stick with Oscars and Tonys. Okay. So at the beginning of each day, I look at, hey, did anything come in from yesterday or previous to tell me I need to make adjustments today? 
And at the end of the day, did anything happen during the day that I need to make adjustments for the remainder of those 168 hours? Do I need to move things around, in other words? Do I have enough padding in there? But the biggest challenge that I see, the number one reason that people get thrown off their A game and start draining their batteries is they don't set that 168 hours up week in, week out. The people that are successful, look at a professional athlete. They have a regimen, and you asked about some habits. They have habits that serve them. 168 hours in, 168 hours out. You look at successful entrepreneurs. They have a system of support. So why don't you? Why aren't you setting that at the beginning of the week? Second is how many calendars do you have? Now, you're thinking, I have one, right? Do you have a to-do list? Do you have a task list? Because here's the thing. Those to-do lists are nothing more than another calendar with a different skin. You got 168 hours. And if your calendar is full, how many more hours are sitting on that to-do list? Another 220 or so? So I say get rid of the to-do list. And I have a system in in my 12-week program that shows you how to move that into your calendar. So instead of, if you're like me, maybe you have a hard time saying no, you start saying yes and. Yes, I can come on your show and it will be two months from now. (laughs) Or yes, I can do that and it will be two days from now. But often we're the ones that are putting that limitation and that expectation on ourselves. If we say, yeah, I can do that and would a week from now be good? Most people are like, oh yeah, dude, that's fine. I wasn't expecting it before that. Rarely will people go, yeah, I really kind of need a brush. Fine, but that's the exception most often. I love that you're sharing this and I appreciate it because so many people have those booked calendars. They have that to-do list and I will say I've got at least 12 or 18 calendars because they're color-coded. So that way I can put interviews on one and color code it because I'm very visual. Yep. It's not that I have 946 things going on. I keep it very focused also, but I, I can't look at the same 12 hours and see purple literally on Google calendars. But the other thing I noticed is you kept saying 168 hours the same way I think about it. You know, What are you doing with this hour of time? I even break it down to there's 96 opportunities a day and I uh, called it, call it block 15 time because – 15 minutes, you can actually, you know, you can kick out some phone calls, some emails, you know, reach out to someone. Maybe you just have a break. Maybe you just went hard for the last two and a half hours. Maybe you just need to half hour to just relax and recoup so you can go into it again. And yeah. I've noticed a lot of successful people look at their time down to the, you know, hour down to the minute. And you kept saying 168 hours because most people say, I have seven days or this week or what are you doing today? Oh, I don't have time today. There's 24 todays if you break it down by the hour. Yeah. So let's, again, take a look at models of, of so-called success that are out there. Who, who's a, a highly successful person that you would love to sit down with in an in interview? That's living? That's living or dead. Well, Jesus, number one, well, he is living. Um Jesus, Elon Musk. All right. We'll use Elon Musk. That, that, Do you think that you can just call up and say, hey, you got a minute? Or do you think that he probably schedules you out? I think he probably schedules. Yeah. So what makes us think that we're any less important? That's self-esteem. You don't just walk into a doctor's office and interrupt and say, hey, yeah, I'm ready to be seen. Um, can I get it, get a spot right now? So. We know that professionals, we know that successful people schedule them out. So if you want a, a, a meeting with me, you had to go through, through my agent, and my agent had to go and look at my schedule, which I give access to, and I have various levels depending on you know my, my friends are VIP, right? So they get more insight. Clients get a window, and then I have exceptions in there. But Fridays, I typically don't take appointments or, or see clients, so I have an exception for that. But the point with that, even my friends, we need to train them to actually respect your time so they respect themselves as well. So if you want time with me, block it. And here's the interesting dynamic about that, Mario, is we think that's being anal retentive or that's being disrespectful. 
No, you know what's actually disrespectful is that when you're physically somewhere, but you're mentally not, you're checked out. Give your family, give your friends, give your clients the respect and presence that they deserve. And when you block the time out, you can be 100% focused on them. But that requires a system to support it. So I have a system that allows you to easily see my calendar and block it out. Second, there's a great interview Charlie Rose did with Warren Buffett and, and Bill Gates in January of 2018, I think. And, he's, and Bill Gates said, in summary, is one of the greatest lessons that Warren ever gave to him was that he used to think having a full schedule was an indication of his level of seriousness. And he realized, actually, his genius comes when he had nothing scheduled, when he had that space to think. And I hate to break it to you, but your genius is probably not going to come out watching a three-minute YouTube video. It might support, it might give you some knowledge, but your creativity is the genius that you uniquely were born with. And in order for that to come to the surface, in order for that to come out, sometimes we have to create silence and space to allow it to come up. And so let me ask, do you have padding in your schedule? Or are you crammed back to back to back? Again, if we look at sports, there's not a sport out there that doesn't have a break in it, a halftime, a quarter, whatever it is, an end of an inning. We all have periods for rest. Or do you wait until you have dis-ease, disease before you collapse in order to say, oh, I, need, I deserve a break? If you actually create those pit stops, then you actually will be able to be more effective and more powerful and more efficient, which is contrary to belief. That is powerful. And yes, I do uh, schedule in the padding. And it's one of the things I've told my clients about for years because let's say you're going into that meeting, the interview, the whatever. Yep. Get there half an hour early so you're there early and also know you have a 10, 15, 20-minute window to just – Hey, I don't need to send out emails. I don't need to do this. I'm not worried about the groceries. I'm not worried about whatever the case may be. It's just I'm really thankful I get to have this interview. And, you know, when I'm on shows, it's the same thing. I'm all jacked up and ready to go and everything, and I'm excited about it because nothing else is on my mind. I'm not going, you know, checking my list of stuff to do for the one, don't have a list of 940 things to do for the week. And two, the stuff you should be focused on. There's nothing better than being present for it. And yeah, not it's not, you know, stuff may run over. It's not always going to be perfect, but what are you aiming for? Are well, you purposely filling it with 80 things or are you going, you know what, here's the 12 I'm doing this week, like a gold medalist? Yeah. So there's a couple of principles in there. You have Pareto's principle, also well known as the rule of 80 20. And that is, if it will keep it, it simple because it can get somewhat confusing, is 80% of your revenues come from the top 20% of your client base. In other words, 80% of what you're doing is only netting 20% results. So instead, what's the 20% of your day, those 12 things that will actually get you 80% there towards your success? I told you it can get confusing. But the point is structure your day. If you're a lark, make your best and most important work first thing in the morning when you're on, on your A game, not in the afternoon or evening, if you in set that day up for success, but make sure that you're deliberate with it. The second is, as I said, is have that padding. Think about NASCAR or Formula One. We'll pick Formula One because we're wearing collars. Sorry. <laughs> Trust me, I love NASCAR as well. But if we look at Formula One, you can have the most advanced technological race car out there. You can have the best pit crew out there, and you can have the best driver on the planet. But the one thing you cannot do is you cannot ever win a race without making a pit stop. So it's about when you strategically make that pit stop. Pit too soon, your competition is going to lap you. You're going to lose. Pit too late, tires get slick. You run out of gas, slam into the wall, you lose. So it's one thing to say we need to do it. It's another to measure and know when do you take it so it's effective, so you get the outcome you want. 
That's how we actually know. So are you measuring? Do you look at your calendar and say, am I actually making progress? Am I getting to where I want to be? Or am I off course? So it's a great way for us to look at, am I getting the outcome or not? Great tips in there. And I'm glad you brought up the example of the lark again, because I think this is the – it's been going on for hundreds of years and all kinds of people talk about it. To be successful, you need to wake up at 3.30 in the morning. Then the next one says you need to wake up at 4.21. And then the other one says, well, my secret to success is 7.14 a.m. And it's what do you think? Is there a magical time that you have to wake up and you have to be a morning person to be successful? Or is it what you're doing with the hours, even if you are a night owl? Well, I, I talked about knowing when to and using measurement to get your outcome, accurate measurement, right? When do you make that strategic pit stop? So when is there an appropriate use for technology and an app for that? If you look here, this is called a WHOOP, W-H-O-O-P, okay? It measures my habits and my health in a different way than this does. So I'm the geek that measures all kinds of things. But the point with that is they're both measuring my sleep, my workout, and my heart strain. So this one is doing HRV, heart rate variable. This is just doing heart rate. So what's the difference? The difference is you say, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds. If you just step on a regular scale, and you've been busting your butt, and that scale hasn't changed one pound. You, I'm done. I quit. This isn't working. Well, maybe you're using the wrong measurement. Now, if we get that same, get a different scale and actually measure you with your body fat percentage, because of the technology, what we can actually see is actually you've lost 20% body fat, but muscle is more dense and therefore weighs more. So you actually, your ratios are shifting and you are making progress. So it's about smart measurement and knowing that the measurement you're using is effective. And there's apps that can do that. So the question is, is not just, hey, do I, am I a morning or evening person? Then we have the measurement that says, are you effective in doing it? Are you turning off the blue light before you go to bed so you actually get good circadian sleep? Are you getting REM? Are you having inter all kinds of stuff that can go into that? But when we measure accurately and with the right tools, then we can actually get to the result that we want. I love that. And I'm curious, what's, on, uh, what's the second one you have? That's the Apple Watch. Okay. I love them both, actually. So I have, a, I, I have three different ways, and I like triplicates. So I like to be able to, as I used to think it was Ronald Reagan, but it's actually an old Russian proverb, trust, but verify. Trust that people have good intentions. Verify that they have the right judgment. Trust that technology is meant there to serve you. Verify that the data is accurate. So our goal like in our calendar, in our data, all that is not to go for perfection, Mario. Create the opportunity for better, not best. Meaning, don't worry about it being or making it perfect. Just start. Small pebbles. If you try to climb Mount Everest without training, without acclimating, you're, it's going to be a disaster. So start with small incremental steps and work your way to it. That is great insight. I appreciate that because... I remember when I got my first watch and it started tracking everything and uh, another software I recommend to people is Rescue Time and it's it's so phenomenal because you're like, no, I'm effective. I'm a high performer. You hook that baby up for a week and it's like <laughs> – you, what, what you're saying is do you really want to know the truth or do you want to continue to lie to yourself? Because it's going to tell you the truth and you're no longer going to be able to lie to yourself. It's not that we think we're lying to others. It's that we're accepting that we're lying to ourselves. And so be very careful. I, I probably recommended Rescue Time to you, and I love it, because the average person is about 23% productive. I'm 89 to 94% productive. That is a, a three to four-fold productivity increase. So maybe my system works, and I can prove it. That's trust 
but verify. Not only am I saying what I'm saying, but I have the data to back it up and the results that show it. And that's the thing. You can actually track it and see it. And the cool thing is like you're saying about creating habits is the more effective you are, the longer you keep doing it for, it does start to take over and become part of you, not just racing against the clock or anything. It it just becomes who you are. Yeah. So to the point of what you were saying earlier, as far as why does Elon Musk schedule stuff out and we th- certain people think that they shouldn't and it goes deals with the self-esteem. Why do you think most people don't prioritize themselves to that level of, well, that's Oprah or that's Bill Gates or that's so-and-so, you know, why do you think that the fact that anyone can be doing the same thing and they don't, where do you think that originates from? Let's, let's look at, at the end of the day, what is it besides time and how people manage the time. How is that Elon Musk is able to be effective and others are struggling to just pay their mortgage, to pay their bills, let alone even dream about going on a mini vacation? Well, here's the difference. I said, you know, people like Stephen Covey love his work, but we need to bring it into the global society that we live in, the 24-7 world that we live in. We never shut down. And in the 80s, we did. We had brick and mortars, nine to fives, right? So what's shifted? Well, we're no longer in a society. And and Peter Drucker, I'm going to age myself, but look up Peter Drucker. He said this about our biggest threat. So the difference is Elon Musk understands the biggest threat to society. How many people know this? And that is, as Peter Drucker said, throughout history, people had little need to manage their careers. They were born into their stations in life, and until the recent past, they relied on companies to chart their career paths. Today, times have drastically changed. We can do and be anything we want, but today we also must learn to manage ourselves, and we are ill-prepared, Mario. It's the greatest threat to our society today. It's not technology. It's not war. It's not politics. It's the inability to manage ourselves. And I will tell you, you want to, you can tell me all kinds of things. Show me your calendar and I'll tell you whether you have the ability to manage yourself. That's the difference is Elon knows how to manage himself first and foremost, and then how to influence and manage his audience. That's deep. Do you think that scares most people? I think it inspires most people because now they know what the root of the problem is. Then we have to then say, okay, let's say that I'm I'm disciplined. Let's say I make the decision to manage myself. Where do I start? Well, you need to start with a guide, somebody that can give you a plan that has a system that knows how to actually deliver on that plan. But in addition to that, we need a foundation. This goes to, to biblical scripture. It goes to all of the different, you know, wise people, Buddha, Jesus, and on and on that we could go and give examples. But the second part is a dear friend of mine, Mark Devine, former 25-year Navy SEAL commander. Much of the SEAL tactics are owed to his genius. And Mark's opinion on this, Commander Devine's comments on this, is he says, here's the problem that we face today as well is the industrial age brought material prosperity and it eliminated a lot of the natural challenges that life used to deliver. But it also brought about obesity, poor health, a lack of purposeful existence and a general malaise with an alarmingly large percentage of the population in dependency. And so we can make that decision and manage ourselves, but the question still begs is, what's my purpose? And so we need to know, how do we really discover our purpose? And it's a lot easier than you think. It's not the house you live in. It's not how much money you want in the bank. It's not the title of of career or the job title of your name plaque. Your purpose is a set of feelings. How do you want to feel? See, if you can look at anything on your calendar and go, oh, that makes me feel good, then you're going to be serving your purpose. But if you look at your calendar and it says, oh, I don't want to do that, Ooh. 
It's all about how you want to feel. And we can go back and there's a, a, a method to easily dis- determine what are your core values? What are your core emotions that allow you to feel like you're serving your purpose? And so if we know what those emotions are, then we can create a calendar and a system. We can create 168 hours to replicate those feelings through the vehicles that we choose or the vehicles that we say, no, thanks. I don't want to do that. You are just, I just want to let you keep going because you're given such wisdom here. And I, just for anyone listening, what we're talking about here, this is in your 12 week course, right? You, I'm sure you go into much greater detail, but these are some of the things they can expect. Yeah, absolutely. And that the reason that it is 12 weeks is because this isn't a, a sprint. You have been, you have a society that is conditioning you to believe in certain things. And this takes time for us to reset the stage, to create a solid foundation. And from there, then in that foundation is about discovering your purpose, using empowering language that is connected to your core values, and then actually being able to understand how do I set it up? Then we look at, at tools in the technology that will actually allow you to, to create leverage, right? I mean, here's the reality. If I, I need to listen to and, and read a lot of of content and books for guests on my radio show. I hate reading that stuff because I do that all the time. So audiobooks, and I listen to it in 2x speed. I have the ability, I built slowly up to 2x, but I can actually digest it and retain it now, right? Let's say it doesn't exist in an audiobook. Office 365, Microsoft Word, take it, it will read aloud and you can change the speed. So I don't care whether what format it comes in, I can digest it. So we we need to understand how do we effectively use technology and how do we turn it off? So there's things in there that say, I have no notifications when I get a new email or something comes in. Why? Because I check my email on a schedule. What a novel concept. Not when it comes in like Pavlov's dog, right? So the 12-week program walks you through. But the best thing about it, and I get get ribbed by my friends and colleagues all the time, Mario, is they're like, dude, you got to cut people off. It's lifetime access of the program. Why? Because you may start with a relationship and say, now I want to tackle finances. Now I want to tackle my career or my health. So you can come back to it and keep pulling it off and come into a community that continues to support that next level of success for you versus, oh, you got to keep paying. Probably to But that speaks to your heart. And that's something you've always been as contribution focused ever since I've known you. And I think that's fantastic. Where can people find specifically the 12? Where's the best place to find information on the 12 week course that I can put in the show notes? Sure. Super easy. All you have to do is go to Chad E Cooper.com. Ease an echo Chad E Cooper.com. That'll take you to my site where you can either begin your journey saying, Hey, I want to run with the big dogs. Or if you've already got a a level of success and you want next level mastery, then you can jump in and go through that path as well. So I give you a couple different paths that you can go through. Right now, I'm also, actually, if you go to chadecooper.com forward slash free courses, I'm actually giving a class away entirely for free. So my foundation, the Chad E. Cooper Foundation, is providing that course. And my hope is, by making that available, it's really, it's a, it's a fantastic course. We didn't just take some junk and go, oh, yeah, we'll make this one free. I'm not giving away the best stuff. It's a phenomenal 45-minute course for free. And my hope is that it inspires you to then say, hey, I, I will donate to the foundation so we can, can support others. So in that 168 hours, are you just taking or are you taking a part of that in actually contributing beyond yourself? If you're just taking, you're just creating moments of happiness. But if you want lasting fulfillment, you have to take care of yourself, but you also have to give beyond yourself. That's what creates the the formula for lasting fulfillment. And that is also what you're talking about. Not only is it going to make people more effective, but now they're going to have more time to be able to contribute more because it's no longer, well, I don't have the time, but I wish I could. Well, wish come true. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, so statistically, they will show people who actually uh, are more charitable, who give, actually make more money and ha- are, are actually happier. They've done study after study after study. If you want to be happier, you want to make more money, 
give some of it away because it moves you from a mindset, Mario, of scarcity to abundance and resourcefulness. You got to come up with a way to make it happen. So it makes you resourceful, which leads to success. And a lot that's that's a whole thing we could do an episode just on. So with everything that we've been talking about, without a doubt, you can provide the breakthroughs. Who's been your biggest transformation that you've been able to give someone before they met you? You work that then they worked with you, and then after working with you, it it was like life changing. You know, I, I can say I've been very fortunate to serve a, a, a number of people, and I have testimonials up the wazoo. Um, humbleness is not a quality that that God went, yeah, that's wasted on him. No, skip. So I, I will say though, I get great pleasure in seeing not just motivation or inspiration, but lasting transformation. So I can go big names with, uh, unfortunately, the big names, most of them want to stay anonymous for obvious reasons, right? But I will tell you, every successful CEO and leader out there has a coach hidden behind the scenes supporting them. One of of those big names is a 10-time world champion boxer about to go into the the Boxing Hall of Fame, uh, Nonito Donare, and He's a, he's a great example of repeated. It's it's hard to earn the title. It's a whole lot harder to retain it nine times. And he's just he's a great example of somebody who was a warrior in the ring, and just as gracious and humble and kind as can be outside of that ring. Just a, a great human being. But the people I really get excited equally about are the everyday people. The people that are in a corporate world saying, I, I want to go out on my own. And how do I gracefully transition to do that? And then seeing them go ladder by ladder, you know, climbing that next step to, to the success that they want. So I can tell you, you know, there's, there's uh, one of my greatest inspirations is, is Katie. She could teach this stuff because she has lived it. She's implemented it. And so that's really the question. Are you just sitting passive listening right now or are you being active taking notes? But if you really want it to stick, go teach it to somebody else. Because by teaching it to somebody else, you have to know the content. So by doing that, you'll change your life and somebody else's hopefully. More powerful words of wisdom. Let's talk about your book. How has that helped your business? You know, the book is is one of those I like giving people options. You can take the slow boat to China, the the least expensive. We have basic economy all the way to first class, right? This is, hey, you can't tell me that you can't afford it because you can go to your library and probably pick it up for free. So I like to make sure that I can give the resources to anybody. And they can't say that time is the problem or they don't have the financial ability to do it. So the book is great for credibility. It's great for being able to serve all kinds of different levels of of people in the world. That has actually recently, and it should be coming out anytime soon, um, but that has been, been, uh, the rights have been bought in China, mainland China, as well as as the extenuating uh, Malaysia, Taiwan, Vietnam area. So that's actually coming out in multiple languages. And Baidu is going to be picking up uh, a number of my video series. And Baidu, if you don't know who they are, are like 10 times the size of Amazon. They're monsters. So to be able to, to take it from a book to having that opportunity, I would say that I, I've done pretty well. And here's the reality, Mar- Mario, is even if I'm abysmal failure, there's over a billion people, I'll do okay. <laughs> Well, congrats on getting it there. I remember when you first launched it and you were helping people back then. And I'm so happy to hear that it's it's continuing to continue to go well for you. And I knew it was, but even the stuff you were sharing before we got started, it sounds like it's really congrats on the foundation again. Thank you. Uh, you know, the, the reality is, is many of these examples, whether you're an everyday schmo like me or your your big celebrity name, you do the work. I'm not going to tell you that there isn't pain or that it isn't difficult. But if you know the strength of your purpose, then you will persevere. See, people use discipline. They think it's it's not their strength that will hold them to their purpose. 
It's the strength of your purpose that will actually get you across the finish line and prevent temptation from knocking you off your game. So I can't promise you that there won't be pain, but I will promise you suffering is a choice and an option. So anything worth conquering is going to have some difficulty. Doesn't mean you have to suffer. So me building this and accomplishing this has been, you know, hard work, but I've had a smile and I get to be who I want to be in the process of every step. And that's what's important. I think it's so great you have your priorities set also. I mean, clearly you're successful in business, but also on a personal level as a husband and father, I'll never forget uh, when we were talking about launching your book and you said, if I can, you said something really effective. If I can do this in six or 12 months on this amount of time, great. But if I need to take two years and I still get to spend time with my family, I'm fine with that also. And yeah. I'll never forget that. And I've used it for examples with other people because it wasn't, it goes back to your calendar and scheduling. You're prioritizing the family in being present, but you still had the goal. It's not that you're not doing it. And it's not that you were taking a year or two to do it in a year or two, just because you think it takes that long, it's, hey, I'm not cutting back on anything I'm doing that's of a high priority, but I am going to get this done. I'm not going to give up one for the other. And I love the example you gave. It reminded me of improv. Yes. And I think so many people nowadays think, well, I can have either or. And the reality is you can have it all. You can have both. It's an abundant economy and you can do anything in it if you're thinking of that way. And but you, you should still have a heart. So thank you for having that. I'm glad you're still uh, contributing and everyone gets to hear from you. I'm excited to showcase you even more in the second half. We're going to thank our sponsor and come back for the imperfect action round. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. All right, we are back with the imperfect action round. Chad, are you ready to take imperfect action? I am absolutely ready to take imperfect action. First question I have for you, 60-second rapid-fire responses. What is the fastest path to the cash? The, the straight line. That's, that's the fastest path to the cash. So fastest path to the cash is know your purpose. And having the strength of the purpose, you're not going to give up. If you give up, it's not that you're not going to stumble. It's not that you're not going to have a, 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 a failure. Failure is often what is experienced for some of the most successful people. But if you know the strength of your purpose, it's about whether you keep getting up. As Rocky Balboa says, that's how winning is done. Great answer. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? I would say the biggest issue that I see today goes back to the guerrilla warfare tactics. And that is, are they actually being intentional with their time? Another way of looking that is, at that is, are they using force or power to actually accomplish their goals? How many of us are using force and low energy? You know, I'm being denied this or there's not enough scarcity versus inspiration versus courage. The, the empowering energies and words that allow us to get there. And when we do that, we actually speed up and get there much, much quicker. More wisdom. Loving it. Number three, what is the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? Well, I would say the best way to do that is determine whether your customers are a customer or a client. And how I determine that is a customer is a transaction. A client is a relationship. So are you actually going in to sell them, which is manipulating, I win and they may lose? Or are you going in to influence them, which is serving them, I win you win. That's how you create lasting relationships in clients long term. That is powerful. That is powerful because so many people look at as customers and I've told people the same thing. Do you actually care what happens to them? One of my rules is I won't take on a client unless they had their heart centric. If they all they care about is the money and the numbers, meh. 
pass because there's a lot of good people out there like yourself and many others that want to do big things and they just – like you're saying, they don't know where to start, not sure what to do with certain things and – you can have a heart and the abundance also, I believe. So thank you for that. Yes. Not clients. only that, Absolutely. but there's the flip side to that. I know we're going fast rapid here, but I got to jump in with that. Is that No, please do. A lot of people have this limiting belief. I don't want to sell people. Salespeople are scumbags. They're, they're, they're slimy. Then don't sell. Serve. When you serve your client, it means that you're speaking your truth through love, not judgment. You're speaking with empathy and compassion. That may mean that you're still speaking something very direct, a, a bitter pill that they have to swallow. But if you're coming from empathy and compassion, it's to serve them, not judge them. And then they get to make the decision. But if you're afraid to sell, you're never going to give them the opportunity to say yes or no or the ability to change their life or decline. So serve them. Don't sell them. One of the things I've told people is and also have enough profit that you're in business down the road because a lot of people have reservations about that. And I go, it's unethical not to be in business. If you're serving them at the highest level and actually care and actually helping them, what are you doing to ensure that you're around three, five, ten years from now? Yeah, I mean, let's Well, no, at- I'll give them a discount. I'll do this. I'll do that. It's like you're serving them but killing yourself. That's not a good model either. Yeah, I'll give you two examples. One of, one of my business partners, Tony Robbins, said, you can't serve the poor by being poor yourself. The second is, we'll go to a bigger one in that, is the Bible, right? If you look at ancient scripture, the Bible is an example, whether you believe in it or not, is a phenomenal resource of, of wisdom and knowledge. And in it, money is, I think, the second or third most used topic in all of the Bible. Maybe it's a little important to God. Maybe it should be important to you. Love is the number one. So worshiping money is bad. Money itself is not bad. Money is not the root of all evil. You need it to make impact for yourself and to serve others. So learn how to have an empowering relationship with it. Well, this is an interesting segue because I love what you're saying and agree Read it if you haven't, people. But um, I was going to ask you, what book would you recommend for Expert Authority World? <laughs> and you just did. Yeah, I've got a couple of books I'm on, uh, always on my, my uh, go-to list. Number one is the Bible. Okay. Number two is Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Just a, 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 If you look at CEOs, you look at successful people, Almost all of them have read the book multiple times. It's just got great wisdom in it. And the third is actually a relatively recent edition, and that is with Ray Dalio. If you don't know who Ray Dalio is, you owe it to yourself to find out. He wrote a book called Principles, and it is amazing. He talks about values and character and how he actually was doing AI back in the 70s before the term was even coined or or really known about. He is. He makes Warren Buffett look like a schlep. He is the most successful financial advisor in history, and most people don't even know his name. There's a gold nugget in there too. A lot of people, uh, you know, they just want to look at me. You know, they just want to be seen, and you know, big hat, no cattle type of thing. And I've noticed there's a lot of people that you're like, who, who, and they're they're behind the scenes like Ray is. That's a great recommendation for the book, though. Thank you for that. Well, I've absolutely got a lot out of this myself. I want to get more people checking out your stuff. Where's the best place they can go to learn more? ChadEcooper.com, but I'm going to say go to ChadEcooper.com forward slash free courses and get a free course. It's a great course. It's powerful. And if you donate, it goes to 100% tax deductible. 100% to the foundation so that we can actually serve others. So it benefits not just you, but you actually can help others through your your generosity and gift as well. And I want to say thanks for making that available because I – know that you don't have to make any anything free available to Expert Authority World, but when you were telling me about it, I was glad you did. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you for letting me share my message and being able to share the, uh, the, what the, the benefits and what the foundation does. So I appreciate it. 
Well, the pleasure is mine, and it was an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you for coming on. I look forward to connecting with you further. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you, and always a pleasure. If I can serve in any way forward, let me know. All right, Expert Authority World, we have another great episode. I know you love Chad as much as I do. I will see you on tomorrow's. Have a great day, and God bless. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five-plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the show. And also be sure to check out eainterviews.com for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow.